Hello, fellow classmates on Coursera. This is Paul, and I'd like to share with you 16 tips to improve your productivity in Code Sculptor. So, most of these tips will come in the form of keyboard shortcuts. Now, I have to admit, I'm a little bit obsessed with doing more on the keyboard and less with the mouse. But the main idea is this if you are sufficiently lazy, you would spend the effort to learn this now and reap the reward over and over and over for the rest of your life. Honestly, this is not for everyone, but I hope that you will find something in here, especially things that's not specific to Code Sculptor that's going to help you manipulate text a little bit more efficiently so that you can save that energy and use it on more important stuff. So let's get right to it. Tip number one is indenting a block of code. So now I'm in Code Sculptor, and this is just a dummy program. It just prints some lyric. Let's say I want to add some conditional statements, like that. All right, so now I have a few lines I need to indent. How do you do them all at the same time? You just select all the lines and then press tab. That's it. Okay, let me do that again. Notice that my selection doesn't have to be perfect. Like that is fine. I just press tab and you're done. Tip number two has to do with smarter indentation. So let's say for some reason you have too much indentation or just plain wrong. Here's something you can fix it up very quickly. You select these lines and then press shift tab. Code Sculptor just fix up all the bad indentations to the way that it think it should be. Hold on, we are not done with indenting things yet. Let's say I'm in this situation and I press shift tab. What happens? Oh no, that's not what I want at all. So in situations like this, we have to have manual control. And the shortcut for that is command and square bracket. The right bracket increases the indentation level by one and the left bracket decreases by one. If you only want to do a single line, you don't have to do a selection. You can do it anywhere on the line. Yeah, so enough about indentations. What about commenting? So when you're debugging your code, sometimes you will say, oh, I know something is wrong in here. So let me hide the top part so I can see if the bottom part is running correctly. So how do you do that? You put it in a comment. And the hotkey for block commenting is Control K. You see that? You get a hash sign in front of each of the lines that you selected. So let me do that a few more times so you can see more clearly. So I select these lines and I hit Ctrl K. And it will just add a hash sign to the front of the line every time you do that. And to reverse this, add Shift. That is Ctrl Shift K. That's pretty neat, right? Now for tip number five. I have to say this to the good people at Rice University. Thank you for implementing this. So now comes the time to run our program. Oh god, do I really have to move the mouse to click that little tiny button at the top left corner of the screen? Heck no! Keyboard to the rescue! So to run the program, I just have to press Ctrl Alt R. Now this differs by platform and by browser, so you have to check for yourself which one is for you. One thing to watch out for when you use this tip is that the keyboard shortcut for refreshing the page is also something plus R. So don't hit refresh, you will lose your work. And then we have tip 6, which is directly related to tip 5. So you run your program, you run your program, and now you want to get back to editing. And you find that nothing happens when you type. Well, that's because when you run the program, the focus has moved away from the text editing area, which is unfortunate. But if you're like me and you want to get back to editing without touching the mouse, try using tab or shift tab to move the focus back to the editing area. In the case of Mac Safari, it's only a shift tap and you're back. Tip number seven. Well, this is probably kind of trivial, but still pretty useful. You know that you can drag the central divider to see more of the editing area, right? And you can also double click it. And that hides the console output, giving you the maximum editing area. Could be a nice thing to have when all you care about is the simple GUI graphical output. Alright, so starting from this one, we're going to talk about things that don't just apply to Code Sculptor. So let's start with the most common keyboard shortcuts that I think probably anyone who uses a computer should know. 
So on the Mac, all these shortcuts are command key plus something. On Windows, you just change that to control. So how do you select all? Command A. How do you copy? Command C. How do you paste? Command V, 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 V. How do you undo? Command Z. How do you redo? Command Shift Z. Or Command Y. That's all. Tip number nine. So search is also a very commonly used keyboard shortcut, but it gets its own tip because it's special. So the shortcut for search or find is just Command F. Hey look, Code Sculptor has its own search bar. That's kind of cute. And I'll search for U. And all the U's are marked. And actually the first result is highlighted. To jump to the next result, I can press Command G to repeat the last search. I can go Command G to go down. And I can do Command Shift G to go up. Say I want to change U to Thy. I can just type over it. Like so, and I press Command G and type over it. Command G and type over it. But what's better, I can copy whatever I want to replace. And then again, Command G, Command V. Command G, Command V. Command G, Command V. If you use a variable in several places and you suddenly want to rename it, give this method a shot. As a side note, it's very interesting to see that CodeSculptor search actually supports regular expressions. So what you do is enclose your search query in two forward slashes. For example, let's say I want to search for I, followed by something, and then U. It works. Very, very interesting. All right, so the next few has to do with moving around. So we all know how to move around using the arrow key, right? Now, there is a way to do it faster. That is, when you press down the Alt key when you do left and right, you'll be moving by words. See that? You jump to the previous or the next word. This is also very useful when you need to go to the beginning or the end of a long word. Similarly, you can delete whole words by pressing Alt Delete. So another type of movement that we do all the time is going to the beginning or the end of a line. You can go to the beginning by pressing Command Left. Similarly, Command Right goes to the end of the line. So I can do something like go into the beginning, add a word, go to the end and add some stuff. Very handy. And now we are in the home stretch. I hope you would agree with me that when we are editing text, we are always highlighting, selecting things. Tips 12 through 16 are going to be just that. For selecting text, Shift key is the start of the show. So if I hold down Shift and move my cursor with the arrow key, I will be doing a selection. It actually gets better because we can combine that with moving by words. So after holding down Shift, you do an out, left and right. You will be selecting by words. 13 is going to be a strange one if you haven't thought about it before. When you are typing and you press enter, what you do is inserting the so-called new line character. So I'm going to select a line in two different ways. I'm going to do everything with the keyboard, but you can think about how it works with the mouse. The first way is selecting the line without a new line character. I'm going to move to the beginning of the line, and then move to the end of the line, but also holding down Shift. Now I'll copy it and paste a few times. See how they all stuck together as one line? Now the second way is selecting the line with the new line character. I do that by moving to the start of the line and do shift down. I'll copy that and paste a few times. Well, you probably prefer this one most of the time, right? So do note the difference. Starting from tip 14, we're actually going to return to the mouse. Surprise, surprise. Let's see how using the shift key can help you with selecting with the mouse. Let's say I selected one section and I let go of the mouse and I say, oh no, I actually wanted two sections. What do you do? Do you do the whole selection again? No, you don't have to. Hold down the shift key and you can continue the selection. Actually, this gives you a pretty elegant way to selecting something that's very long, say longer than a page. 
What you do is you put the cursor where you want the selection to start and then hold down the shift key and click where you want the selection to end. That's a lot more elegant than trying to drag over long sections. Oh no, it's almost over! Tip number 15! You can select words by double clicking. And it looks like this. You just double click, double click, double click. And actually, if you double click and hold down the second click and drag, you will find that your selection moves by words. I think you'll find that much easier than trying to locate the beginning of a word. And of course, you can always let go of the mouse and adjust with your keyboard. Last but not least, triple clicking selects the whole line. Again, nothing fancy, you just click, 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 and click, 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 click. And if you hold the third click and drag, you'll be changing your selection by whole lines. I hope by now you are utterly confused and your head is about to explode. But trust me, just try to integrate some of these tricks when you're writing your programs and very soon it will be like second nature. Happy coding everyone! <laughs>